Okay, day five. But in some sense, this is day one of two. So I'd like to welcome you all to the Species Descriptions course. This course is dedicated to Caleb O'Forey, who, who lobbied very rigorously and vigorously for its, its happening. Uh, so luckily he's here, at least for a couple of days. Um, but essentially what this course is about is perhaps taking a little bit of the mystery away from this um, very stereotyped, um, almost ritual procedure that, that biology has of describing species. I mean, this is where we have codes and this is where we have um, these rules that are absolute, and if you mess it up, you have the shame of synonymy or of um, an invalid description and a, a nomen dubium or a nomen nudum. So this is one of the most perhaps regimented things we do in biology. It's been done perhaps 1.8 million times, perhaps more, um, and it's been done wrong a lot of times. Um, and as you'll hear a little bit later in the morning, it's also not been done very frequently by uh, the people in the countries of origin of some of the most diverse faunas and floras. So uh, the idea of this course is simply to take a bit of the mystery away. There's been a lot of talk over the last several decades of of this challenge, which is to get all of biological diversity cataloged and described and, and essentially studyable. If it doesn't have a name, it's very difficult to, um, to address not just the diversity, but also the conservation uh, of a species rigorously. And so, this idea has been called the taxonomic impediment, which kind of sounds like taxonomy is getting in the way of everybody else. But it, so maybe that's not quite the word. Um, but even in this page, the Global Taxonomy Initiative, there's some interesting little tidbits. There are millions of species still un, undescribed, and there are far too few taxonomists to do the job especially in biodiversity rich but economically poorer countries. Most taxonomists work in industrialized countries which typically, typically have less diverse biotas than more tropical developing countries. Collection institutions in industrialized countries also hold most specimens from these developing countries as well as associated taxonomic information. So maybe that's part of the impediment as well. So let's get a few basic terms clear, because I, I think we have a, a variety of levels of, of um, knowledge of this field at the outset. Um, so let's just go through kind of three or four big concepts, and then you're going to get a lot of review of concepts in the course of these two days. So, Evolutionary theory is kind of the basic conceptual mechanistic underpinning to understanding biological diversification. And then we have this other field which is systematics, which is much more of a, um, an effort to understand the, the end products of, of evolution, which is the study of diversity of life on Earth. And systematics is also a quite a varied field. We'll be talking about phylogenetics, which is the, the effort to essentially estimate the genealogy of the species or the, the diversity of life on Earth. And then fi finally, taxonomy is translating all of the above into a classification. So taxonomy is much more of a, a bookkeeping field. It's translating very diverse, multidimensional synthetic knowledge into a way that we can 
you know, ask the question, uh, what, what are the species of frogs in Cameroon? And if, if we're reduced to saying, oh, there's that big red one and that little green one, we're not going to be very rigorous. So taxonomy is a way of giving kind of permanent identifiers to uh, that diversity. So in this course, we, ha we have only two days. Um, so what we will try to do is to provide an overview of taxonomy and systematics as they relate to description of biological diversity, so essentially background, and then provide a step-by-step -step guide to development of species descriptions. And this doesn't necessarily mean that you won't need a colleague or a collaborator or information from whatever museum in the world holds the type specimen of the most closely related taxon. But this is intended at least to get you so far as to be able to do most of the process yourself. Okay, that's, that's the goal of the course. And so if in the next couple years we see some species descriptions coming out of this group, that would be very, very heartwarming. Um, as usual, we will aim to discuss and debate ideas. And as usual, we'll be capturing everything digitally so that we can extend the reach of this course beyond just the 20 or 25 of us. So here's a rough outline of what we will be doing in the next two days. We're on the course introduction right now. We're going to talk about essentially the, the um, process and history of description of uh, a few groups of Cameroonian biota, just as a case study. And I guess, I bet that the story in each of your countries is pretty much the same story. Um, we'll talk about codes of nomenclature, we'll talk about phylogenetic versus traditional taxonomies, um, we'll talk about the effects of new phylogenetic knowledge on taxonomy, we'll go over online resources just to show you that it's not just what you can get access to in the library but also what you can find online, we'll do some exercises about choosing a proper new name for a taxon. And then in day two, we'll go briefly into how do you know it's a new species? And then we'll go into <clears throat> what makes up a description. And there are kind of two levels of that. There is what is required you know, to meet the code or the codes. Um, and then there's a second set of ingredients about what makes it a rich solid and robust description. We'll go through description examples for birds, frogs, lizards, and plants. And then at the very end, we'll do an exercise on diagnoses. Okay, in this case, diagnoses of species. The last course we did was on national biodiversity diagnoses, but a very different sense of the word. You know the general plan because you've been here all week, but we'll essentially meet 9 to 11, 12, 11.30 to 1, 2 to 3.30, and 4 to 5. Uh, your instructors are uh, Moses Sange from Tropeg, Rafe Brown from the University of Kansas, Dave Blackburn from Cal Academy of Sciences, Eric Folkham from the University of Buea, and we'll have a guest lecture by Dr. Peggy um, from a, an agency that manages natural resources here in Cameroon. And as always, your, your problem solvers are Kate and me, and as always, those are my granddaughters. And it's probably about time to get a new picture, because now they're even bigger. So I'll have a new picture by the next course.